Hi everyone, my name is Austin. Welcome to another video. I would be your I'll also be your facilitator for this course, Power BI. And let's jump right into it. So today we'll be looking at very easy steps to download or to import data, right? So, uh, so basically, we want to be able to import data. We want to be able to import a guided project data set into Power BI, right? So, um, what we would do is would move over to a guided project, and it is very important that we have must have gone through this critically right to understand what we are trying to do right it's very very important so i'm guessing that in your week one you would have gone through uh, the introduction the client profile your task everything that you need to do right to understand the data set is very key right so now because we must have done that and also before i move on it's very important that you go through your data dictionary right so you understand what columns what fields are used what are the field names what does it entail everything about your data set is very very important now i'm sure you must have done that so when you get to import data what you need to do is we want to basically import these two data into two data sets into a power bi desktop right so we would the simple way right easy way we are here to just do the easy way of importing these two different data sets right so what we'll do is we we'll click on it and then we would we would try to so you might you might have an issue right you might have an issue trying to download straight up right so i would advise that you make a copy right you click on making a copy and then so once you make a copy right let's say we make a copy so if I'm, I'm saying for people that might have issues downloading straight right when they come to file and they will not see this option to download right so i advise you make a copy so once you do that you would have that option of downloading and then let's download this as a csv file right let's download this as a csv file because it's a one page data set right so let's download this as a csv file yes so download it has downloaded so our next download that we are supposed to do is we go back to our guided project let us download this right so we'll click on this as usual Right. so we'll click on this and then notice that we have a lot of sheets and we are interested in 2012 2013 2014 all the way to 2023 right the data set that this year is houses right that's basically what we're interested in we are not interested in the cover pages and the rest but hey we also need to download this right so these are easy steps, right, for you to download and import to your Power BI desktop. Right? There are various ways you can go to get um, share to web, and then you get the link, and then you. But these are like the basic. This is like the basic way for you to download and then import to Power BI desktop, right? Let us start from the basics. It's very important. So we we'll do the same thing. File and most of us might not have. The, the the download button icon available for us so we make a copy as usual uh, make a copy so once you make a copy it's still coming up yes so you see something as make a copy right and then you come here come to file or rather sorry come to file come to file 
then you download on how you are downloading as an excel file right so it will be able to contain all the sheets right so if we download a csv it's going to just download this sheet that is selected right so let us download as microsoft excel workbook so i click on my microsoft excel workbook and i'm sure that it's downloading or if not that it has downloaded so let's go to okay yes it's just downloaded now yes 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 so let's go to our file explorer right your file explorer is this page where you have your quick access your your download documents so that's what we call file explorer right so once you go so definitely we downloaded it right so it's supposed to be in my download folder right so these are the two data sets we've been able to download right so now let's head over to power bi to import this downloaded data set see so this is like the basics of importing data sets right importing different data sets csv microsoft excel pdfs and the rest into your power bi desktop so now let's head over to power bi this is your front page or your home page that you're going to have right so now for me to import any kind of data right the first step what you need to do is you go to your get data right and you notice that we have different data sources where you can extract or import data with right we have our excel workbook data flows sql server csv format web we have a lot Right, so once I click on more, we have a whole lot. So you see, if you, are, you can download or you can import your data sets if it's on a file format. You can import data sets if they are stored on databases, if they are also stored on Azure platforms, and the rest. Very, very, very beautiful. You have a lot of data sources where you can download or import data from, right? Using Power BI. But hey, we are interested in what? What? Interested in our excel workbook because the format of our data set is we downloaded one as an excel sheet we also downloaded one as a csv sheet right those are the two data sources we want to import so i would so let me go back so everybody so we we'll come to get data so this is more right where you have to connect to data from multiple sources but because i'm saying excel workbook and csv connector here so there's no need for me to click on more right so i'll just come to okay i want to connect i want to be able to import my excel sheet that we downloaded one of our data types or rather our data source that we downloaded was an excel workbook right so i'll click on excel workbook so notice that if i come to my download it's giving me all excel workbooks that i've worked on right everything excel so it's not giving me any kind of data or data source everything will be excel because i clicked on excel workbook so it goes maybe i connect or goes to your local pc checks for anything excel sheet anything excel format right and for you to know an excel format it gives you it ends in it always has this extension dot l x l s x right that's how you know an excel worksheet right for a csv form um worksheet it ends in the extension ends in csv right that's how you know if it is pdf you know the extension will stop will end in dot pdf right yeah so if it's a jupyter notebook you know the extension will be ipynb right so that's that's basically the difference right so so this is what we are interested in right i'll click on this right remember how we got here was we came to our get data excel workbook because we know that we want to import an excel workbook right that's the that's what we know go to our download folder where we have it stored this is the file i click on it and then i would open this so notice when i was saying the extension look at the extension what i was saying so excel files always have this dot s l s x this is a macro file and the rest right so very important so i'll click on open after clicking on the data set so yes so you notice now that because we downloaded it as an excel workbook it has given us all the sheets that we are interested in so 
I'll click on the sheet that I'm interested in and then push it to my power query, right? So let's click on this. You're interested in this. Interested in this, interested in this, we're interested in this, we're interested in this, we're interested in this, 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 this. So we are not interested in cover sheets and notes, right? These are the sheets that we're interested in. So I would so there are two things, guys. We have the load and then transform. So if I click on load, it means that I'm happy with this data set. I don't want to do any cleaning. I don't want to create new columns. I don't want to do some, some, some ask about my data set, right? But I will encourage us based on the assignments that we'll be doing to push it to a power query, right? Editor. And for me to push it to a power query editor, for me to do our data cleaning and transformation, we need to click on our transform data, right? So normally if I clicked on load, it takes me to this page right this canva page on our power bi desktop right it takes the data sets direct to our power bi desktop but once we click on transform data it pushes us to a new window called power query editor so let's go once we click on transform data it gives us a new window so notice that it's saying it is processing queries right yes Yes, voila. So we have it in 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 a new window called Power Query Editor, right? So guys, remember that. Remember, remember that we still have one data set to also import, right? And also push to Power Query Editor so that we'll be able to clean and transform, right? So now for me to do that, and by the way, I know that everybody maybe when you have yours you will not have this information it's fine i'll show you guys how to have it right because it's very very important you understand the immediately you understand what your column contains whether it has empty cells whether it has errors whether it has um, um whether it needs to be clean or whether it's 100 percent valid it's very very important that you have this kind of information it gives you summary about your columns right so now let's go back to the first ask Remember that we also need to import the second data set, right? Which is about regions, right? So for me to do that, we can as well just come to, right? Remember this is a power query editor now, right, guys? We can as well just come to new source and then we connect. So we still have everything that we had in our... So I don't want to... I want everybody to follow me. So notice this. I'm sure you guys must have must be seeing my screen, right? You would notice that we have Power BI desktop and then Power Query Editor, right? So we have two windows now, right? So let me go back to our Power Query Editor. So for me to connect a new data source from my Power Query Editor without me going back to my Power BI desktop, come to my new source, and then I'll go to remember what we want to connect. It's no longer an Excel workbook. It's not an SQL server, right? It's not a link via the web. We just want to connect the csv file now so i'll click on my csv connector let's hold on i don't know why it's taking time my system these days is showing me shaggy <laughs> So let me let me try to I don't want to click on it and so that it will not hang. Uh, this is what we face. It's not even giving me option. So let me be patient. Why is this taking time now? Just wow. So let me go back again. I'll click on new source, right? Click on text the CSV. Alright, so it gives me it still gives me a now it gives me so if I come to my download 
remember where we stored those data sets was on our download folder right if i click on download so it's giving me everything here that you're seeing here are all csv files right you're not seeing anything everything here contains csv files so if i check on this folder there's a csv file here right that's why it's giving me right this is a csv file notice the description microsoft excel comma separated values file right it's not a, it's not an excel file right remember this extension this has dot csv so it's a csv file it's a text file right so this is the data set i'm concerned about right i'm sorry that i did not rename <laughs> but at least you would understand that this is our re recrime geo anything you see geo it means like okay it's a region or geographical data set so I'll click on it then i'll click on open all right so because we are in our power query editor so we are not going to see the option of load transform and load transform data right so we just click on ok because it's so obvious that we want to clean this data set that's why it's here right so now voila we have everything that we want here right so let me start here so we've been able to import two different data sources it's an excel workbook that contains a lot of sheets and a csv file into power bi desktop and then we were able to push these files into power query editor and also imported data from our power query editor as well so we've been able to do a lot of things right which is good now let me show normally i'm supposed to end this video but <laughs> because of the love i have for everybody let me show let me show what it means to have this right so i'm sure that um we will not have this right on our power bi desktop or power, power, power query editor right um so for you to have this because it's important right so i can see that i need not clean this column because everything is okay it's 100 valid there's no no value there's no empty cell and the rest right so i'm good with this column and the data type is okay abc text data type and this is a text that's why it's on the left right and this is one two three a, an integer that's why it's on the right and we don't have an empty value we don't have a null value so you see how important this information is so for you to do this way to have this you go to your view and then you click on column quality so if i unclick this you see that this is how your power bi or rather power query editor will look like initially right without you having an information except you filter and go through everything start dragging to see some empty rows and if and some no values right but when you have this column quality clicked it gives you summarized information about your column right now that's one now another thing that i would want everybody to do is so this is we also this is we cleaning our data right we've moved from importing data to cleaning data right so another thing i would envisage or that i would want everybody to do is to rename these tables right or these queries now we have different sheets remember that all this was housed in one excel workbook right now before we can do i would advise before we can do anything to these queries right or these tables individual tables because if you say you want to do some data cleaning for this right if you say you want to do some data cleaning for this if you say you want to do some data cleaning for this or for this column called no right no 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 notice that we have an empty cell or rather we have empty cells right we don't have any value so this column is irrelevant we need to remove it right so imagine you doing removing this column almost virtually for every Come here, you remove the same thing. Come here, you remove the same thing. You see? So imagine you doing this, doing this for virtually all queries, right? It's it's going to be really, really, really. But what I notice now is I notice that I notice that some sheets don't have it. Right, some sheet don't have that column nine and ten. So let's check. Yes, so I think I think it's just twenty twelve and twenty thirteen that has that. Yeah. 
checking. So you see what I'm doing. So this is this is stressful. See, you see, this one has it. So we need to append all this table into one table so that any change we want to now make will just be done on that appended table. I hope everybody understands, right? So the goal now is we have all these tables, right? All these individual queries, right? We need to make them to have just one generalized table so that we'll be able to effect changes on that generalized table now, right? That's the idea. So notice that everything I'm doing is I'm going one after the other on different queries or different tables, which is very stressful. So imagine I want to move this column to this place. I will move it to this place in this table. I'll go to this one again, do the same thing. Good. It's very stressful. So, uh, so yes, so I think we have. So what we'll do is so let's go. So first of all, I would like for this to be a text data type. All right, so I'll just click here and then I will make it a text data type right so it will be uniformed and then i don't need this column because everything here is telling me 100 percent empty right i'll come here now either i come here and right click or i come here and go to my home tab you see remove columns right because it's selected right i can just click only remove columns or i right click after selecting this column and then you see uh remove right so once i remove i've removed it so let's do the same thing for 2012 2013 2014 so we have two columns that are irrelevant right so i'll do the same thing i'll select hold your control and then select another right both of them first of all hold your control select arm and then select this and then either you right click and then remove columns or you do the same thing as i did right but let me right click and remove both 2014, do the same thing. I think we are good to go. Right, I think we are good to go. Or oh, one other table. I think one other query has an irrelevant column. So let's be sure before we append. So why we are doing this is we want to append this table. So we are not appending this. Remember, guys, this is a separate table. This has our geo data, right? This has our geographical data. But this has the police information, right? The financial year, financial quarter, first name, the offense, what kind of offense was committed. And right. so it's very, very important that we must have gone through the data set and the data dictionary, as I said earlier. Right. So let's check 2019, 20. Okay, you see? You see, it's very important. So this is like the bulk of the job, right? After importing your data and pushing to transform data, this is what you do. It's very important that you check all this. So let's remove this as well. It's irrelevant, we don't need it. And then so I think we are good to go to append this table. So because this is very important, there's no way you can do any cleaning without trying to append these tables into one so that you do your cleaning on that one generalized table. Right? So it's very, very important. So you see why Power BI is very interesting. So I think we are good to go, guys. Yeah. So now we are not working with this, right? This is another data set on its own, right? So yeah. So this is what we want to append. So now for you to append, right? For you to append, you need to have the same number of columns and then the same data type. What do I mean? So let's say I want to append all this table, right? I need to be sure that this table has one two three four five six seven eight columns i need to be sure then i will check for 2013 2014 one two three four five six seven it. you see so definitely i can append these two tables right because one it satisfies this fair condition they have the same number of columns and the second condition so far this column is financial year and it has a text data type so definitely the first column in our 2012 data set would also have the data type text if this one has a numeric data type which is one two three integer 
the second table, the second column in our second table must also have that data type. You see, it confirms. So we can do our append. Right? So if you notice all this table up until our 2023 to 2024, we we'll definitely have that that um that structure, right? It's number of columns and the same number of data types. So we can also do our append. So let's append and then look at this and then we'll call it a day so for me to append i'll click on this i'll go to transform um, or rather add column because we want to add a new column oh sorry so you go to your home you come to your home tab right then you come to append queries right so so these two what it means is do you want to append this query and then append all every query under this right that's the meaning do you want to append all these queries under this you know when i say append you want to put a table under another table under another table so when you are doing that your number of rows will be increased but your number of columns will still be constant right so when i'm saying append i want to put something under another thing something under another thing do you understand so if i say append queries so if i append all these queries everything will be under our 2012 2013 data but i don't want that i want everything to have i want when i'm done with my append i want to have a new generalized table <clears throat> all right so i'll click on append query as new so you saying do you want to join just two tables i say no i want to join three or more tables so because our 2012 13 data set is already here so there's no need for me to drag it here again because if not to be duplicated right i'll just drag this so i'll hold your control key palm control palm see i'm with my control key so i'm selecting everything i want to add to this table to append palm. it is very important that you do this before you start anything so you see i've been able to select the tables that i want to push to this side notice that i did not select this because this is a totally different data set notice i did not select this because we have it already in our tables to append so i'll click on add remove your hand from control and then click on add and then click on ok let's be sure 2012 all the way to 2024 yeah now click on ok see so voila we have our newly append table so this is this is the result of appending all these tables into one so we can as well name this come here and name it crime data set data set right click on enter it names it so this is the table that you would do more data cleaning on if there's any data cleaning activity that is required of everybody right then let us look at our second data type so i'm seeing that first thing let me help everybody i'm seeing that we have our column names our header names to look as if it's part of the row right if you notice region is supposed to be on this place ons code is supposed to be here first name is supposed to be here so what we'll do is we we'll come here and then we'll say we want to use our first row as our headers once i do that see so we now have our header names to be where it's supposed to be then let's rename this as uh, maybe geodata so you can name it anything that would be descriptive enough for you so let me just name it geodata though so maybe we can rename it later on but for now geodata so with that i think we have come to the end of this video if you get to this point i'm happy that you got to this point it's very important that you get to this point if not the other materials or as you move on it will be very confusing it's very important that you get to this point that you've been able to import and then you do these little things that we did in our power query editor and then um um this one last thing that i'm going to show everybody so one last thing is we need to close and apply so we have three options once you click on this drop down we have close and apply apply and close so close and apply means all the changes that we did here I'll, when next we 
when another video or in our live session we'll talk about these apply steps so close and apply means all the changes we did here we want it to be applied right everything when we move to our power bi desktop and then please close this power query editor once you have applied it but this apply means that okay i want these changes to be effected in my data set but please don't close the power query editor i'm coming back to use it but if i click on close it means that please close this power query editor and please don't apply anything right i don't want you to apply it on our initial data set that we imported do you understand but hey i want it to be applied right so but if i do my close and apply which is the best option here right it will take time it will take a whole lot of time for this to load into my Power BI desktop, right? Because we'll have this also loading, this also loading, and we don't basically need this again, right? Because we've already appended all this to have our newly found data set that has all these entries in one, right? So for me to do that, we can come here and click on this, click on this query, right click, and then on click enable load, do the same thing here, right click, on click enable load, Pam, right click, on click enable load. Pam, right click, on click enable load. Pam, right, right, on click. See, so I'm just clicking on each yake um, table and then on clicking enable load. So I don't want it to load into our Power BI desktop because we already have the appended format here. So please don't unclick this geodata. Don't unclick the enable load for your geodata. It's very important. So we want this. We want this. These are two data sets that we want. So we basically don't need this again because we've been able to append them to give us our crime data set. So now we can close and apply. Also click on close and apply. It populates your changes to your Power BI desktop now. See, notice that the only data set that are loading are the crime data set, appended crime data set, and your geo data. Yep, so we are good to go. So if you are here, if you have your crime data set and your geo data here by now, when, as you're watching this video, Congratulations, you have done well. So see you on the next one, guys. Bye.